So we're here with Flexi Graph here at ID Tech X show here in Berlin. So who are you? Hi, I'm Shad Hallam, CEO and founder of Flexi Graph. Um, we're here today as a startup here. We, we got a, a stand. Exciting times, um, a great day, lots of interesting stuff and the ability to network with a lot of people from a, a cross-section of different technologies. So, so, so why do you say uh, cooling electrical vehicle batteries? Yeah, so our technology is nano-enhanced fluids. So any closed loop cooling system will benefit from our system. So graphene is in a solution or a suspension that we can use in any cooling system and For replace- servers? So a, a data center, so liquid cool data center is an example. We have here an example in a electric vehicle. So that the cooling of electric vehicle batteries or electric drivetrain components. Um, and we also have use cases for heat exchange systems. So geothermal heat exchanges or industrial heat exchanges and also high performance engines internal combustion engines can benefit from the product. Is that that's only high-end cars, it's not every car? Oh, any car can use it, but the benefits are potentially not there. Most cars today, uh, you know, the power is restricted, you know, for emissions and other values. So the, the benefits of the system or the technology necessarily don't don't apply to a, a normal motor, but it can be used in a normal motor. So you're saying you're 60% better than water? 60% better than water or any of the host fluids. So water, water glycol, uh, water ethanol. It's a big deal, no? It is. It's uh, the first breakthrough in this technology in, in around 90 years since glycol came into liquid cool systems. Who did that? Uh, who used that for what? 90 uh, years ago? Combustion engines. So it was to cool them down, they were getting too hot? Yeah. For the first kind of like cars and trucks and... Yeah, I believe so. And then, uh, or airplanes maybe? Can, potentially, I would say that they were probably air-cooled to start with. And so what is it going to enable all this? Um, if we look at it, and if we look at, say, an electric drivetrain, you know, there's an issue with, with heat when it comes to charging, so it can allow faster charging. It could allow the, the increased density in, in batteries. I, I believe also if you look at, at cold temperatures, uh, there's performance loss and capacity loss in, in extremely low con temperature conditions. We'll be able to bring warmth to the system in, in a quicker way. Um, and cycling time and le longevity of, of battery life could also be enhanced with without temperature peaks and the overheating of batteries. Are you talking about charging the batteries faster? Absolutely, and in the, the charging infrastructure is a use case as well. In the, the, high, the high power charging units, there's cooling in the, um, the actual cables. That's what makes them expensive? Or? That makes, and very big and very heavy, so less, less coolant required with ours, so they, they wouldn't be as heavy, plus you, you could, potentially increase uh, the capacity further. So uh, those Teslas, they have supercharged, right? Yep. They have issues or the superchargers are more expensive because of all the cooling concerns? Or yeah, plus, plus, plus limitations, I, I think, in terms of the ability to, to charge as fast. So is it graphene? Graphene is the, the active component. So it's right here, there's uh, some graphene right here. Uh, those, this is that, your special. Uh, that's the fluid, mix? I, exactly, and it? it's the. This is water and graphene, so it's the graphene is making it a dark grey in, in colour. So, you, so you have water too. Yeah, it can be in water. Basically, whatever the base fluid is of any cooling system, um, our graphene enhancement will improve the thermal conductivity. So water, water glycol, uh, water ethanol, um, and we're looking at other solutions going forward. 
I'm just joking a little bit, but I, I think yes. Intel should be very interested because they are, their processors overheat a lot. <laughs> Not joking, because my website is called ARM Devices, but maybe you could have a laptop that has a faster CPU that overclocks. And yeah, you can and, have a thinner design. Exactly, and we're, we're looking at, at different technologies involved adhesives between electronic components. We also uh, are looking at the the next application is the development of um, our material that can be in direct contact with electric components. Um, graphene is, is electrically conductive, so we'd have to use a, another another active component. All right. So how soon? Uh, because there's a lot about graphene. It takes time to get into the market or something. But is it going to take time, or are you ready? We're, or we, we've got the minimum viable product. What we need to do is get it into real systems and. and test them in, in real life systems. Um, we're doing that with some geothermal in, in the, the coming weeks and months. Um, with vehicles, it's a, a longer process. There's certification um, that's required to do that. Nice. So that's awesome. Graphene is going to, and your way of doing it is going to, cool. cool. Exactly. Stuff cool on, stuff uh, better. Air conditioning? Air conditioning, if we, we look at it in terms of not ev evaporative, but, but heat pump systems, absolutely, there, there's use cases there. <coughs> and as I said, geothermal tooling, uh, heating, and if you turn it around, you could do it the, the reverse way uh, and use it to, to have in heat pumps that, that cool. Or it's not for heating, it's for cooling. Or heating. You could be doing the reverse. Yeah, it, it just moves heat more effectively inside the system. So the, 